The early years Pontius Pilate's rise to power, Pontius Pilate, a name that echoes through history. But who was the man behind this infamous moniker? Let's journey back to the beginning. Pilate was born around 20 BC in the Roman province of Samnium. His family, they were of the equestrian order, not quite nobility, but certainly well off. Young Pontius grew up in a world of privilege and opportunity, but also one of duty and expectation. From an early age, Pilate showed promise. He was smart, ambitious, and he had a knack for politics. As Pilate climbed the ranks of Roman society, he caught the eye of powerful patrons. One in particular would change the course of his life. Lucius Aelius Sejanus, the commander of the Praetorian Guard. In the year 26 AD, Pontius Pilate received his most significant appointment yet. He was to become the Prefect of Judea, a troublesome province on the eastern fringes of the Roman Empire. It was a challenging post, one that required a delicate balance of diplomacy and force. Pilate arrived in Judea with high hopes and grand ambitions. He was determined to bring order to this unruly region, to make his mark on history. From the start, Pilate faced opposition. The Jewish population resented Roman rule and Pilate's heavy-handed tactics only made matters worse. He introduced Roman standards into Jerusalem, a move that deeply offended Jewish religious sensibilities. When protests erupted, Pilate responded with brutal force. Despite the challenges, Pilate did achieve some successes. He oversaw the construction of an aqueduct to bring water to Jerusalem, a much-needed infrastructure project. But even this was mired in controversy. Pilate used funds from the temple treasury to finance it. The trial that shook the world, Jesus before Pilate. It was in the year 33 AD that Pilate's name would become forever linked with one of history's most significant events. A Jewish preacher named Jesus was brought before him. The charge, sedition against Rome. The trial was a tense affair. Pilate questioned Jesus directly. He was intrigued by the man's calm demeanor, his cryptic responses. What is truth? Pilate famously asked, but he received no answer, only silence. As the trial progressed, Pilate became increasingly uneasy. He could find no fault in Jesus, no reason to condemn him, but the crowd was growing restless. The Jewish leaders were insistent. They wanted Jesus crucified. Pilate tried to find a way out. He offered to release Jesus as part of a Passover tradition, but the crowd chose a criminal named Barabbas instead. Pilate was running out of options. In a final symbolic gesture, Pilate washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he declared. But even as he spoke the words, he knew they rang hollow, and in the end he gave the order. Jesus would be crucified. A decision that would haunt him the crucifixion. The crucifixion of Jesus was a brutal affair, as was standard Roman practice. Pilate oversaw the proceedings from a distance. He watched as Jesus was flogged, crowned with thorns, and forced to carry his own cross. It was a scene of unimaginable suffering, one that would haunt Pilate for the rest of his days. As Jesus hung on the cross, strange events began to unfold. The sky darkened in the middle of the day. An earthquake shook the ground, the veil in the temple was torn in two. When Jesus finally died, Pilate was approached by a man named Joseph of Arimathea. He requested Jesus' body for burial. Pilate granted the request, but he insisted on posting guards at the tomb. He had a nagging suspicion that this wasn't the end of the story. Guilt and turmoil, Pilate's inner struggle. As the dust settled on the crucifixion, Pilate found himself in turmoil. He had always prided himself on his judgment, his ability to make tough decisions, but now doubt gnawed at him. Had he made the right choice? Or had he allowed himself to be swayed by the crowd? Nightmares plagued his sleep. He would wake in a cold sweat, seeing Jesus' face, hearing his words. What is truth? The question echoed in his mind. Pilate threw himself into his work, trying to distract himself from his growing sense of guilt. But it was no use. Every decision he made now seemed tainted, clouded by the memory of that fateful day. He became irritable, prone to outbursts of anger. His subordinates walked on eggshells around him, never knowing what might set him off. Pilate's wife, Claudia, watched her husband's decline with growing concern. She had warned him about Jesus, had told him of a dream she'd had. Three days after the crucifixion, strange rumors began to circulate. The tomb where Jesus had been buried was empty. His followers claimed he had risen from the dead. At first, Pilate dismissed these stories as nonsense, the ravings of grief-stricken disciples. But as the rumors persisted, Pilate's unease grew. He remembered the guards he had posted at the tomb. What had they seen? He summoned them for questioning. 
Their story was bizarre. They spoke of a blinding light, an angel, the stone rolling away on its own. Pilate didn't know what to believe. Part of him wanted to dismiss it all as superstition, but another part was afraid. What if it was true? What if he had indeed crucified the Son of God? The thought filled him with dread. As reports of Jesus' appearances to his disciples spread, Pilate's fear turned to panic. He ordered his men to find the body to disprove the resurrection claims. The final years of Pontius Pilate's life are shrouded in mystery. Historical records are sparse and often contradictory. But one thing is clear. His tenure as governor of Judea came to an abrupt end in 36 AD. He was recalled to Rome to face charges of cruelty and oppression. Some accounts suggest that Pilate was exiled, sent to Gaul. Others claim he was forced to commit suicide. There's even a legend that he converted to Christianity, seeking forgiveness for his role in Jesus' death, the truth we may never know. One of the most intriguing theories comes from Switzerland. There's a mountain there called Mount Pilatus. As we look back on the life of Pontius Pilate, we're left with more questions than answers. Was he a villain, a victim of circumstance, or simply a man caught in events beyond his control? The truth, as always, is likely somewhere in between. Pilate's story is a stark reminder of the power we hold, the impact our decisions can have not just on our own lives but on the course of history. It's easy to judge Pilate from the safety of hindsight, but how many of us can say we would have acted differently in his place? Pilate chose the easy path and paid for it with a lifetime of regret. So as we close this chapter on Pontius Pilate, I invite you to reflect.